when I heard the knock on my door, I knew. He died a hero, they said, but that was no comfort. I called Molly, and she wept. She wanted me to come live with her, but I couldn't leave. I just couldn't leave. at four or five feet of water. We can see the worst of this storm by 3 a.m. New Yorkers are going to wake up in a very different city tomorrow. As the sun rose the next day, it was clear that both my city and my life had been destroyed. Battery Park fills up with seawater. Lower West Side, uh, Lower East Side, from Brooklyn, Queens is flooded. Kennedy Airport's flooded. Newark Airport's flooded. It's all going to be underwater. In the coming days, when the waters receded, the city was filthy and everything that could rot was rotting. People wanted to leave, but for many of them, there was nowhere to go. How welcoming will people be when New York or Boston sink underwater? and all those people in their millions come to New England or to Pennsylvania. How welcoming will people be? I packed my things and set them at the door. But I didn't leave. I suppose you could say I was stubborn. And I was needed at Bellevue more than ever. There were millions who needed someone to care for them. As the seas rose, the wealthy moved uptown to higher ground and hired private companies to pick up the trash. But in the low-lying slums, tap water was contaminated. People were so poor they ate only once a day, if they ate at all. When people are hungry and people are malnourished, as you continue to have displacement with floods, there's no doubt that's a perfect setup for certain types of infections. I was working the late shift when the first case came in. A young man with a cough and a high fever, and then I noticed the blisters all over his body. Was this the virus I had seen years ago? Another case of Caspian fever. Officials have issued a statement asking people to avoid public meetings. All New York City schools have been shut down. Representatives from the CDC confirm that this virus is cause for concern. Within a week, over 20 were dead. People on the streets wore masks, avoided each other. The air was ripe with panic. Advisory reminding citizens to wash their hands and cover their mouths. You would shut down factories, you would shut down trade, you would shut down commerce. Everything would shut down. Death toll from Caspian fever has now reached 107. The virus continued to mutate and spread. So some long incubating virus that kills very fast. That's the kind of thing that's going to get us. It only took a few people on a few planes to spread it around the world. Cases of the fever have been confirmed in over 100 it's countries. now estimated that 10,000 have died in Mexico City. Temporary morgues have been set up in the streets of Shanghai. The Vatican conducted a national funeral mass today. From Singapore to Sydney, the globe shut down. Farmers wouldn't bring food into cities. Cargo ships wouldn't dock, let alone unload. Billions were on the verge of starvation. I saw hundreds of people die every day. I was immune, one of the lucky ones. It was hard to feel anything. There was too much to feel. You think about the effect that th this kind of disaster would have. Everybody's depressed. What do you do with all the bodies? 
people just gonna, you know, take their loved ones to the local park and, and leave them there? At that point, cities will be unbearable. You could see it on people's faces on the street. They had given up. As more and more people died, all services broke down. There were frequent blackouts. And now, connections to the internet were intermittent at best. Around the world, deaths from the Caspian fever show no sun. And then one day, the power just went out. The phones, the internet, the whole data network went down. Some said it was a terrorist. Others thought it was the flooding. Suddenly, no one knew anything for sure. If communication breaks down, rumor becomes a communication system, then a mob psychology takes over. Collapse is not something that actually happens overnight. It's the result of an accumulation of stresses, an erosion of the internal strength of society, so that it just becomes like an eggshell, and one last shock breaks it. Looting was rampant. Most of the police force deserted. The mayor was nowhere to be found. We waited for the president or the National Guard to appear, but no one came. That's when it dawned on us that the government, like so much else, had failed. If the world breaks down, if globalization breaks down, then even the capacity of the United States uh, to, to kind of manage uh, a degraded global environment, I think, will come into question. What we'll see is the federal government being viewed as, uh, as something not to be taken seriously anymore. Reports were sketchy, but here's what I know for sure. The virus continued to spread. India and China had gone to war over water and who knew what else. Millions were dying from famine. The human race was collapsing under its own weight. By that time, I would guess that we will be seeing a substantial die-off of the human population. Most of civil society will have degenerated. I was 75 when I walked across that George Washington Bridge. There were no checkpoints anymore. I left with a couple of friends and a dog who had adopted me. Rosie, I called her. She never left my side. But where was I going? I didn't know if Molly was still alive, let alone still on the farm up north. I didn't know if I had a grandson anymore. But that was my hope, that I could somehow find them, or they me. A few hundred years down the line, they'll look back and say, the Dark Ages began in the 21st century. Our city, beautiful city, was abandoned. And nature took over quickly, as it always has. The breakdown would be rather rapid. The flooding of Manhattan would have a real destabilizing effect. The subway tunnels would flood and they would stay flooded. The columns that hold up the streets, they're steel, they will rust, they will corrode. The streets above them start caving in and lo and behold, we have surface rivers once again in Manhattan. Nature has that momentum, you see, to take this thing back. Perhaps will become like a jungle here. Won't be the asphalt jungle, it'll be the real jungle. Your big skyscrapers here are well anchored into Manhattan schist. On the other hand, they 